Hi, I'm Murphy. This is my channel where I talk about books because I love to talk about books and frankly I don't have anyone to talk to them about except you. So, uh, today I want to talk about a specific book which I haven't done yet. This is my first time doing this. Uh, this is Simenon and I probably am mispronouncing that as it's a, um, well, he was born in Belgium and he lived in France, so I probably should be pronouncing it differently, but this particular one is The Hatter's Phantom. And uh, Simenon was the author of the Maigret series, but he was also the author of, you know, over 400 books. Uh, and this is not a Maigret story. I had never read Simenon before, to my knowledge. He was not in my the list I keep of books that I've read. And so what drew me to him? Well, he's he wrote the Maigret uh, books, and so those are books that are well known. Uh, although probably not as well known as uh, some of the other detectives from fiction history. Uh, another reason has to do with uh, a boyfriend I used to have back in, uh, I guess, the late 80s. I dated this guy who had a very large collection of books. And... Um, I lived in his house when he was gone for the summer. I sort of house sat for him and I perused his bookshelves and he loved, well, he had a wide ranging tastes, but he loved uh, m police procedurals and mysteries of that were not quite mainstream. So he had all the Martin Beck books and I read all those. And I can't say for sure that he had Maigret, uh, which again, I'm probably mispronouncing. I apologize. Uh, I know about this much French, and I've never had anybody that could help me with pronunciation, and I just haven't bothered doing anything online. So uh, I don't know if he had any of those, but I just feel like he would have. Uh, and so uh, when I was at a bookstore, I believe I got this actually at the Planned Parenthood book sale uh, just a couple of weeks ago. And I saw the, the name, Simenon, and just had to get it. So let's talk about this book a little bit. I never plan to give spoilers, and so I'll just talk about the big picture of the book, the things that you would find out right away. So right away, we find out that there have been five women in this area of, uh, of the city they're in. It's not, I don't remember which city it is. It's not uh, Paris, but it is in France, but it's a, a smaller city. And five women have been killed, and these women are sort of in the neighborhood that the hatter of the story uh, lives in. And so people are a little uh, cautious about letting women travel outside. It seems like these women are all of a certain age. Um, they have different occupations, different interests. Um, and they're, but they're all killed at about the same time in the evening, and they all seem to be about the same age as each other, or close, very close in age. Uh, so we know that right at the beginning. The story focuses on a hatter and a tailor, and they have their storefronts where they and their workshops right across from each other, and they both live above their workshops and they seem to have this mutual fascination with each other. They're not friends. They don't pal around with each other, but 
every day at about the same time, one of them will listen for the other one to lock up their workshop and head off to the bar. And the other one will follow. And they will greet each other politely, not warmly, and then not walk together to the bar, but they sort of follow each other to the bar. The uh, hatter sits around with his cronies and uh, they play bridge. Uh, four people are playing bridge all the time and then different ones of them will go in and out at the ends of rubbers or you know if someone gets called away. And the hatter uh, gets a, a drink and sits at a nearby table. And at one time in the in the book, one of the when one day the hatter doesn't show up, one of the cronies says that um, his the sorry, one day the tailor doesn't show up, and the hatter's cronies ask him. I am sure I have gotten those mixed up already, but it doesn't matter. Um, the Hatter's cronies say, hey, your dog isn't here, the one that follows you around. So it's obvious to everyone that there's this strange mutual fascination or connection between these two. So, but um, the killer, what the killer has been doing is the killer writes letters to the local newspaper and talks about what's happened and won't say why he's chosen these women, won't say that he's even just killing women. He, you know, just wants, I don't know what he wants, actually. And this book is all about the psychology of, of the killer. And, but he writes letters to the uh, newspaper about what he's doing. At the same bar, where the hatter and the tailor go every evening, like clockwork, um, is also uh, the chief of detectives uh, has his drinks there. The editor of a paper, in fact, the paper that the killer is sending his letters to, and um, the particular news writer who's writing the stories about the killings is there. They all hang out. The tailor, not hang out together, but in the same bar every day. The tailor, the hatter, the editor, the chief of detectives, and the news writer. So one day, something happens and one of the hatter or the tailor knows now that the other one is the killer. And we find this out like within the first 30 pages. So this isn't something that, you know, is a spoiler. But then the rest of the book is about the psychology of how each of them behave knowing that the other one knows how each of, and they both, uh, the person who is the killer knows that the other one knows that they're the killer. Um, like I said, that happens within the first 30 pages or so. Don't quote me on the number of pages, but it's, it's close. And uh, so the rest of the book is about the psychology of that. Um, and so in that way, it, you know, has this, Edgar Allan Poe uh, feeling to it because there's a lot of introspection, a lot of thinking, you know, what are other people thinking? What, what's going to happen if I do this? Uh, why am I doing this? Am I really doing this for the reasons that I think I'm doing this? Uh, and, and so, and so on. Uh, some people might not like that kind of book. I think that sort of uh, descriptive, introspective 
not very much action sort of story is good in, in doses. Uh, to make up for that, right now I'm reading an action-packed book. Uh, but, uh, but I thought it was interesting. I thought it was interesting because I wanted to know how things played out and things didn't play out exactly as I thought. Um, I actually was giving the killer, well, I can't, I can't say what I was going to say. Um, so I was surprised about some things and, uh, and that's good, but you know, is a, is a slog, even though this book is only, um, 172 pages, it was a slog to get through all of the thoughts that were going on uh, instead of having a lot of action. Um, but it was interesting because I didn't know anything about this author. I did a little research on their, on their biography, on his biography. Um, to see what he's like. That's where I found out that he wrote over 400 books. He was disappointed that he never uh, won uh, a big prize for his writing, but he started out writing just to make money, and it wasn't until later that he started writing what he called his uh, hard novels, and I think this would be considered one of those, um, but it still seems a little pulpy, uh, at only 172 pages, um, it seemed a little pulpy because uh, there's a murder story involved. So even though it's not one of the Magrat series. Um, so will I read more of Simenon? Yes, if I find uh, some of the Magrat series, I will. If I run across his books, I'll probably pick them up uh, just to see them. All right, I did a little book shopping this morning at the local library. They pull books off the shelf periodically and put them out to sell for 50 cents each, which is a nice a nice uh, bargain. This book cost uh, this book cost me two dollars at the Planned Parenthood book sale. Uh, because I bought it on the first day and I didn't get the 50% off. And the two books I got, uh, one is Two Bronze Pennies by Chris Nixon, and it's a Tom Harper mystery. It seems I know nothing about this. I know nothing about the author. I really enjoy picking up books that I have no foreknowledge of. Sometimes I like to not even read what's in the the desk cover, but uh, it says that this is the second uh, Tom Harper mystery and that uh, Nixon has written uh, six highly acclaimed novels in the Richard Nottingham series, so I don't know what that's about. Um, I like the the artwork on the outside. I like that it's a historical novel. Uh, we'll see if it's interesting, uh, somewhat a blurb on the front that comes from some review of Gods of Gold, which must be one of his other books, says an entertaining and thoroughly engaging procedural. So I'm assuming this is a procedural, so we'll see how that is. And then the other I got was uh, Escape from Stalagluf Three. The True Story of the Successful Great Escape, The Memoir of Bram Vanderstock. And uh, Bram, Bram Vanderstock is not British and not American. And uh, he's from the Netherlands. And so part of his thrust and another book that I looked at uh, about uh, The Great Escape is that all of the officers were not British and American as is depicted in the, the movie, The Great Escape with Charles Bronson 
and various other people. Lots of lots of good people. I've seen that movie multiple times. I think it's one of the few movies I actually own. Um, but I have read the book by Paul Brickhill called The Great Escape, which is also about the escape from A Stolic Love 3. And uh, I'm curious to see for 50 cents <laughs> what this book will be like. Um, and I noticed that there were uh, several other. So of the, I think in the 70s, the 70 men who escaped from Astalag Luth III, only three of them made it outside of Germany, and uh, Van der Stock was one of them. So anyway, that's what I have to talk about today. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned, but it's afternoon here. It's a little rainy and stormy outside. The sun is coming out a little bit, but it's probably going to be short, short lived and go away. Um, but uh, that's these are the books I'm thinking about today. Thanks for letting me talk to you about it. Take care.